हेलो आवाज सम्राइज है नागर साहेब यस सर आवाज आवे छे आवाज आवे छे ने हां अबे ओला मेहता साहेब एक दाऊद थी जोड़ा है એટલે આપણે ચાલુ કરીએ સાહેબ એક જ વ્યક્તિ બાકી છે હા બસ તમે મને તરત કહો હું ચાલુ જ છું એ હા સાહેબ सोनी साहब एक ओला मेहता साहब जोड़ा दाहोद वाला चालू कर अरे आप भट्ट साइड पर कड़ी थी ज्वाइन किया से भट्ट साइड तुम्हारा माइक खोलो संबड़ाई से आवाज ये जे भट्ट साइड हेलो के जे भट्ट साहब संबड़ाई से यस यस गुड आफ्टरनून सर मारो आवाज आवे छे तुमने रुपेश साहब क्लियरली તમારો કમ્પ્લીટ છે વિરલ ભાઈ આ બે ને ચેક કરી લઈએ આપણે ફાલ્ગુની મેડમ તમે તમારું ઓન કરો હા હા સર ઓકે હા હા ફાલ્ગુની બેન ક્યાં છે અત્યારે આઈ ગઈ આઈ ગઈ આઈ ગઈ એટલે કરે ગોદરા જો હા ગોદરા કરે સરસ બહુ સરસ अपने चालू कर दिए वो नहीं साहब एक वाई गए जोड़ाई जैसे कई फोन बोन आयो हुए ना चलो सोनी साहब प्लीज चालू करो स्टार्ट करो यस सर यस सर शुभम करोति कल्याण हम आरोग्यम धन संपदा शत्रु बुद्धि विनाशाय दीप ज्योतिर नमोस्तुते मानसिक श्रावण महीनाना यज्ञ निमित्ते मानसिक श्लोक दीप प्रज्वलन कर प्रोफेसर प्रताप सिंह जी चौहान साहेब अमरा इंचार्ज रजिस्ट्रार अनिल सोलंकी साहेब अमरा सौ ईसी तथा एसी मेम्बर्स गोविंद गुरु यूनिवर्सिटी आचार्य श्रीओ अध्यापक मित्रों आज पांचमा व्याख्यान वक्ता डॉक्टर विरल भाई मांडलिया क्राइस्ट कॉलेज नामांकित गुजरात कॉलेज है जेन वर्षो धी ए ग्रेड आयो एवं कॉलेज आज अमरा व्याख्यान अमरी वे उपस्थित है एम विषय आर डीएनए टेक्नोलॉजी डीएनए नोर्टन्स आज समय में कितने बढ़ू है डॉक्टर रूपेश नाकर प्राध्यापक फाल्गुनी बेन पर रूपेश नाकर सर ने एनएसएस काम करता जु छू 
એકદમ ચરહરતી કારકિર્દી સાયન્સ માં એમને લેક્ચર સાંભળતા પણ જોઉં છું ફાલ્ગુ ની બેન ની ટ્વીસ તૈયાર કરતા જોઉં છું તો મને ખુબ આનંદ થાય છે કે અમારા પછી ની પણ તેજસ્વી પેઢી યુનિવર્સિટી માં એનો કી રોલ અદા કરી રહી છે આ તમામ સાથી મિત્રો ગુજરાત ના ખૂણે ખૂણે થી જોડાયેલા છે અને આ માધ્યમ થી એક બાજુ કોવિડ મહામારી ચાલુ જ છે એનો પ્રભાવ દિન બધી દિન વધતો જાય છે અને એવા સમયમાં વિદ્યાર્થી ની શક્તિ ને રચનાત્મક અને પોઝિટિવ માર્ગ આપવાનો વાઇસ ચાન્સલર નો સંકલ્પ અમારી ટીમ પૂરો કરી રહી છે એમનો અમને સવિશેષ આનંદ છે આ કોઈ એક જન નું કામ નથી ચાચા હાથ અડિયામણા કેટલા બધા માઇન્ડ કેટલા બધા હાથ ભેગા થાય ત્યારે આ કામ થાય છે વાઇસ ચાન્સલર અમને કહે છે કમ ટુગેધર થિંક ટુગેધર વર્ક ટુગેધર આવો સાથે મળીને આપણે આપણા સમય નો સદઉપયોગ વિદ્યાર્થીઓની કારકિર્દી ને ઉજ્જવળ બનાવવા માટે આપણે ભવ્ય પુરુષાર્થ કરીએ આપણા તેજસ્વી વિદ્યાર્થીઓને દિશા પૂરી પાડીએ અને એના ઉજ્જવળ ભવિષ્યની કામના કરીએ મને લાગે છે કે નાકર સાહેબ આ પાંચમું વ્યાખ્યાન ખૂબ ઝડપથી ફટાફટ ને કામ કરી રહ્યા છે આજે અમારી બાયોલોજી ની ક્વીઝ મૂકેલી છે આવતીકાલે અમે બીજી ક્વીઝ મૂકવા જઈ રહ્યા છે તો આખા ગુજરાત ના ખૂણે ખૂણે થી અમને ખુબ મોટી સંખ્યામાં ફોન દ્વારા મેસેજ દ્વારા આ કાર્યક્રમ ને બિરદાવવામાં આવે છે તે બદલ હું સૌ નો ખુબ ખુબ આભારી છું અમારી સાથી ટીમ ના અને જેને જેને પણ આ પ્રયોગ માં મદદ કરેલી છે વિદ્યાર્થી માટે નો આ એક માત્ર પ્રયોગ આખા ગુજરાત માં ગોવિંદ ચલાવી રહી છે એમનો અમને સવિશેષ આનંદ છે મોટીવેશન પ્રોવાઈડર ડોક્ટર અજય સોની સાહેબ Uh, you are always great motivator for us and without your support uh, it wouldn't have been possible for us to organize such a program in uh, subject life uh, like sci- life sciences we have already uh, covered uh, many topics in four lecture now today we are with uh, one another expert who is working uh, as a assistant professor in christ college rajkot uh, i will uh, in, i will give his introduction afterward but first uh, i would like to invite uh, dr kj bhat sir who is uh, uh, already online from the kadi science uh, college so i would invite him to speak few words and to provide his best wishes message to the students uh, who are already online uh, uh, already listening us uh, through online mode on facebook and uh, facebook and youtube so kj bhat sir if you can hear me you are requested to provide your best wishes uh, best wishes uh, message sir ओके ओके हां डॉक्टर रूपेश नाकर गुरु गोविंद यूनिवर्सिटी गोदरा में छे न जे कार्य छे बहु सारू छे ए लाइफ साइंस ना खास करे लाइफ साइंस ना विद्यार्थी ओ माटे जे अत्यारे विविध एग्जाम नेक्स्ट लेटर ना अन्य परीक्षाओ माटे ने तैयारी माटे जे वर्क करे छे अलग-अलग प्रकार ना वीडियो वगैरे बनावे ने मुके छे ने आखो ग्रुप बनावेल छे व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप वगैरे અને એમાં વિદ્યાર્થીઓ ના અત્યારે આજના સમયમાં અત્યારે જયારે લોકડાઉન વગેરે ચાલે છે ઘરે બેઠા છે રૂબરૂ કઈ માર્ગદર્શન નથી મળતું વિદ્યાર્થી નો ત્યારે આ ખુબ જ સારી સેવાકીય પ્રવૃત્તિ ડોક્ટર રૂપેશ નાકર દ્વારા કરવામાં આવે છે અને એ માટે વિદ્યાર્થીઓ જે છે એને સારું એવું બધું માર્ગદર્શન મળી રહે છે મેં તો ખુબ અમુક વિડીયો પણ જોયેલા છે એમના જે મૂકેલા હોય ગ્રુપમાં વગેરે માં એ એટલે ખુબ સારી સુંદર કામગીરી છે અને આવી ને કામગીરી કરતા રહે ને આમાં કઈ અમારો કઈ સાત સહકાર ક્યારે જરૂર પડે તો અમે અવશ્ય તૈયાર છીએ ક્યારે જરૂર હોય તો કહેજો ડોક્ટર કે હું ડોક્ટર કેજે ભટ્ટ પ્રમુખ સ્વામી સાયન્સ કોલેજ એચઓડી બોટની ડિપાર્ટમેન્ટ થેન્ક યુ થેન્ક યુ વેરી મચ મને જે આ તક આપી એ માટે થેન્ક યુ સો મચ ફોર યોર બેસ્ટ વિશીસ એન્ડ બ્લેસિંગ યુ આર ઓલવેઝ અવર મોટિવેટર એન્ડ ગ્રેટ ગુરુ વી લર્ન લોટ ઓફ થિંગ્સ ફ્રોમ યુ બટ સર સો થેન્ક યુ આઈ વિશ ધેટ યુ વિલ બી કનેક્ટેડ થ્રુ આઉટ ધ લેક્ચર એન્ડ યોર સ્ટુડન્ટ્સ વિલ ઓલસો બી એબલ ટુ અટેન્ડ વિથ અટેન્ડ ધ સેમિનાર થ્રુ ધીસ ઓનલાઈન લિંક્સ એન્ડ થ્રુ ફેસબુક એન્ડ YouTube વિડિયોસ 
so thank you okay. again sir now uh, we have with us our eminent speaker today dr viral kumar b mandalya his phd in biotechnology he is working as a assistant professor in um, christ college rajkot which is very famous in uh, whole country uh, he pursued his phd from saurashtra university in 2014 he has worked as a assistant professor in gujarat national law university gandhinagar from august 2016 to june 2019 He has also worked as a research associate in biotech department under a very famous scientist Dr. Radha Krishnan sir uh, in Directorate of Groundnut Research Center, Junagadh. And uh, he is my very close friend as we worked together there. I was in physiology and uh, the Viral sir was working with biotechnology. So it was great time, sir. Again, he has received Young Scientist Award also from International Foundation of Royal Military in Chennai. Uh, he has got different uh, scholarship from Government of India. he has published four books and uh, three book chapters along with he has a good research paper uh, uh, um, you know, of 16 in different uh, uh, journals uh, which are reputed journals of different level national and international levels so uh, i wish uh, him uh, for great lecture uh, to pro uh, to provide to the students so without any delay uh, i would invite uh, dr viral mandalya sir to proceed uh, for the lecture so please sir go, uh, go ahead for the lecture viral sir Uh, thank you very much sir uh, first of all i would like to thank to like a uh, guru go in the university that a vice chancellor has taken such initiative and forwarded by the registrar and like uh, the uh, uh, in uh, under the leadership in the like ajay soni sir has uh, given really a motivational speech for us that uh, even uh, for the teachers like us those who are on a uh, stepping st stone for uh, doing in education for us also is really <coughs> motivational and the special chief of guest uh, we can say like uh, but sir uh, is uh, open very well that uh, in each of the dimension uh, the education is most important things and currently in the covid 19 era uh, the initiative taken by the university which is really good that uh, not only the students from the only uh, godra but the it is going to co uh, cover now entire the uh, gujarat and the, some of the students are looking for, uh, forward from the join from the un uh, another states also it is really good initiative uh, from uh, the end of the university and i would like to just specially thanks to like a uh, uh, rupesh nagar sir uh, uh, we were together in uh, junagadh and uh, he always uh, whenever he is doing some of the new things especially like in music Uh, I know about him a lot, so always he's sharing the things with us, and uh, I also share with my friend that uh, what look uh, one of the, my friend is doing so many other than the ex the curricular activities a lot, but extracurricular is also uh, doing a lot, and uh, I'm thankful like uh, Algoni man is also with us, so we can uh, have the all together a new learning procedures for the, all the students. those who are in uh, like a uh, last year's for in a uh, graduation so those who are in doing the post graduate duty uh, studies as well as those who are in research for that so without wasting time uh, just i'm going to, uh, going to open the topics that is uh, today given for me like uh, rd and technology yeah so good afternoon the students uh, i hope you can uh, able to view my uh, one of the powerpoint presentations i have uh, prepared uh, this uh, whole uh, my presentations in two to three different powerpoint presentations are there along with it somewhere i have taken some of the quiz also that i have prepared in some word files so one by one i'm going to share the things with you uh, and uh, any time if it is the some uh, uh, queries will be there or something you can ask uh, otherwise you can forward to the Rupesh sir, so Rupesh sir can uh, stop me any time, and uh, we can have the one and two where the conversations uh, um, among us. So without wasting time, just I would like to give the some brief uh, uh, things. What just I'm looking to include because uh, net examinations and other uh, G set all are having one particular more than one aspects to be get covered. Uh, here uh, we knows like uh, and especially in net exams you are looking CSR and net. one of the last unit that you are knowing that is a modern techniques in biology is there the first point is been covered like rdna technology which is the most important part that the so many points are included so i have what uh, with, with the limitation of time uh, the uh, first part i have just started to include in this rdna technology that is the first i looking to brief about the such technology where and what is the name of the technology 
what are the basic steps are involved and among them we are going to more explore the first two steps that is like enzyme involved in rdna technology and vectors so the most important part into the our uh, whole area is like that that is a vectors involved in the rdna technology most of the questions you may know about it uh, that uh, been uh, asked uh, always Uh, that relate to the plasmid vectors what? are there what are the system is there complemented system so we are going to learn one by one in my presentations so let's move ahead uh, with this yeah first i would like to uh, mention in a way that if it is been asked as a rdna technology or it is like a genetic engineering or genetic manipulation or gene cloning all are the near to the same terminology in case of molecular biology we know that the one to another terminology has always used uh, that is the synonymous thing if you are uh, looking this a genetic engineering so it won't involves the rdna technology genetic manipulation is the change this making in the base space and other so this all are one or another way it is the uh, giving the connections with the one to another so all are you can say that the synonymous terminology and what is it enclosed like simple the one best simple thing is like addition deletion or the manipulation of single traits in an organism to create desired change here i am going to focus the word at trait uh, especially like a trait what is coming we are able to recall the mendels mendel gene mendelian genetics was there like a p plant is there and like a color coat of the gene so many things were there the trait is being uh, included over there and as we know like a trait it is being given by the some factors in previously mendel was calling the calling as a factor nowadays we are calling as a gene so we are going to play with the gene and this this well um, uh, uh, the playing with the gene you can say it's like a gene manipulations or genetic manipulations and making a correction and addition it is going to consider as a genetic engineering so in broad term if you are looking to uh, change the dna so for that some alteration is made into the original dna that is it became certain additions and in additions maybe it is additions or deletion is called the re recombinant dna molecule and when you transfer such recombinant molecule to any particular host that's a transferring or to the host it's like a transformation sir experimentations are there that is called the gene cloning so in the few words i would like to say that these are the interconnected things or you can say the one or another with the synonym is of the one to another so let's move further so what uh, you need to know first in the like in rdna technology the three major aspects that manipulation of gene and alteration of gene how to do what are the steps are involved into manipulations and what are the basic process how you can follow that in first my presentations i am going to very brief uh, descriptions about the some steps are that are involved in this rdna technology like isolation uh, of our dna then we are looking to uh, join this dna molecule with our desired product uh, the, the desired segment of the dna for what we are looking the desired products and this uh, rdna we are going to transform into certain host and we are going to look for their expression and some of the applications that, that we are going to learn in this uh, for the steps so in short the, you can say that artificial uh, rdna technology is nothing but like artificial copy of a piece of a dna from one to another organism here it is like uh, seems that uh, even the enzyme in the covid-19 era it is there and they are also wearing the mask so uh, this is just a funny story by just looking to include just to mention about that what that copying of a dna from one to another place that how it's going to happen and what are the enzymes are going to participate uh, that's let's uh, look one by one here uh, if it is in you are looking on the left hand side the one of the enzyme is carrying the some caesar into hand so it's a molecular caesar and uh, uh, one another enzyme is participating and having the certain things with he in his hand it is like a glue so it's a molecular Bluer. So we are going to learn about the two enzyme, most important enzymes. Those who are participating in RDNA technology. We are going to learn their mechanism even in more detail in the next coming slides. Slides. So what is the basic purpose? The basic purpose of DNA technology is to insert a particular gene segment either of the place of in the you can say in the hierarchy of uh, organisms in the whole kingdom. You can play with the prokaryotes to eukaryotes. Even one of the example can be said that. Like, human genes can be inserted in, into a bacterium here uh, one of the most important questions some of the time is been asked in the gset or the some competitive exam like the insulin was the first successful exam uh, example for the rdna technology don't get confused student over here 
that I have used the word insulin. Uh, people were uh, giving the, some multiple choice question with the insulin coma, it may be written as a humulin, third, uh, third coma may be given as a both or none of the above. So you may get confused that I should uh, include as a humulin or insulin. The thing we are knowing the story about it, the insulin genes has been taken out from the human and transferred to the bacterium, the last, one of the bacteria were like E. coli. And the E. coli was successfully able to produce the uh, product like a insulin. But the dear friend, the thing is what, the on the next stage when the insulin where the from the human side when such a protein has been uh, the prepared in the e coli were first been given to the uh, humans were having certain limitations because here the some of the component were taken uh, as a part of the only the gene segments were taken the exonic C, uh, cds were taken not all the casket so on the next step what they have done that uh, with uh, what particular the promoter were taken from the another like it's in the bacterial and the humulin the terminology where came and this humulin were produced into the mice so what was the their aspects were over their period the promoter from the uh, mice were taken and the second part is the whole exonic sequence were been taken from the humor and this kind of a, a whole rdna were prepared and transferred it is like you can say is a transgenic animal even like a mice been prepared in a way then it was been termed as the humulin also people have carried out such experimentations in e coli and yeast also so it depend upon the, uh, uh, the companies they may produce the insulin you can give the term insulin or the humulin uh, because nowadays it is the fully compatible that is useful for the human without any kind of you can say uh, any immunogenic response are coming so fun uh, for the uh, point of view in the questions in the net or any of the exams if it is the questions being asked the first successful example then don't forget to click on the insulin fine uh, and any uh, other example also are that the, we can transfer the human genes from the one cell to another that is from the human to the animals even you can play with the animal to human as well as you can transfer the bacterial gene from one to another place uh, uh, let's move further That what are the five stages that are involved in the RDNA technology? So I'm going to include the four to five major are that isolation, cutting, ligation, insertion, transformation, and extraction. In this presentation, we are going to just look about the some basic things only, not more in the detail. Like, okay, let's uh, start with the isolation. The most and four most important part when you are looking for the isolation, that is the, the isolation of a DNA. The most important thing is what? If you want to start the experimentations you should first have the desired dna it is not like that you are working on the uh, any kind of a, uh, a laboratory and you are looking that i want to prepare the insulin gene and uh, you may isolate same gene there are the so many uh, methodology also if you are looking to try start into that you maybe have learned some of the bioinformatics aspect in the bioinformatics aspect we are, we are going with the ncb national uh, Center for Biotechnology Information, and you just look, uh, type it down the insulin gene, human insulin gene. All CDC, the, uh, the whole CD is, is going to appear on your uh, uh, page. So from there, you may able to design uh, some primers because it is there into the computer. You, when you are going to perform on the experimentation, you need to have the same thing in your hand. So how to get it out? Such thing only is possible that first you need to isolate the human DNA. Now the next step is what? Either you may go to some genetic probe that is a very old age technology like a sudden and blotting were done and based on the probe you may isolate your desired segment. Nowadays the people are directly looking for the primer based experimentation. So you may design the certain primer from the human insulin and just do one of the PCR experimentation. Just add the DNA of the human uh, and the, from another end add the primers for the human insulin. The product is going to generate it out. It's a PCR product that is going to have the, your human insulin. So your desired segment is with us. Now the next story start that need to isolate the certain vectors because without the vectors that you cannot do such an experimentation. So uh, parallel to DNA isolation is done from the human, um, uh, human you have uh, carried out the certain experimentations like a transfer of the, for the transfer, uh, PCR you have carried out. Along with it, you may isolate the plasmids. So 
this plasmid is very much unique we are going to learn the various kind of a plasmid in my next uh, continuation part where we are going to look that plasmids are of a various kind and they do have certain restriction enzyme uh, in next of the few slides you are going to learn about the restriction enzyme what are the restriction enzyme they are the nothing but a one of the cutting enzymes here you can see some of the picture that is some animation is moving like that that one the dna uh, strand is there and i was using the uh, cutter here you can say the like a molecular scissor apne gujarati mein isko kaise cutter kahiye chhe that is nothing but a like a restriction site he is looking for that each cutter having their unique restriction site and restriction site always generally you know it has been found that there we are going to learn about the various types of a restriction enzyme also type 1 type 2 and type 3 so they are recognize there is uh, one particular set of the site where they will cut the dna this is called the restriction site so this restriction site generally of a paleondromic sequence we are what are the paleondromic sequence that i will take later but just uh, think about the restriction site so one of the enzyme is going to look the restriction site is where so dna will be cut from it so now the thing will be with us in a way that your desired dna with us as a pca product now we are going to uh, prepare the some restriction site so uh, just you can check it out into your uh, uh, your desired dna whether it having the restriction site or not or else what you need to do uh, whenever you have started to design the primer within the primer you may include the restriction site the primer itself having the certain site of the uh, restriction enzyme maybe it is like a example we may take the equar one uh, so equar one uh, site is already available into the uh, pcr products now so it's become very easy that one hand it is you are having the plasmid dna which is also able to you are cut with the restriction enzyme like equar one and the, your desired dna fragment is also having the equar one so let's join them together and this joining is going to give you a, pro, a whole products so here you can see like that uh, donor dna is there and the plasmid dna is there uh, both are the dna is available within to it so what going to possible here that uh, enzymes uh, here the next will be there the two fragments are flanking the plasmid is here and the donor dna is in a side so next point will be done by the ligase enzyme that is you can say the molecular gluer glue what is the general fundamental thing is of the gluer is there it always doing the one of the basic uh, things like to bind two things so uh, here the one of the some basic animations were there like that two sticky ends we are going to learn about the sticky ends and the blunt end uh, there are the two type of uh, bend uh, could be possible when you are uh, using the certain restriction enzyme so these two end ends will be get bound with one to another and this bounding will conform and finalize that gap filling done by the dna ligase so we are going to learn in the next my presentations that how molecular actions is taken at the which step so uh, this is the very basic concept i'm just looking that ligation and insertion so here you can see like a foreign dna was there plasmid was uh, here ho and both are been bound by the dna ligase so now we are ready with our plasmid and now next step is what we need to transfer this uh, plasmid into a particular host and this is you can say like a transformation of our recombinant dna because our plasmid having the desired segment is different because uh, originally plasmid was a uh, different and we have added our the uh, For, uh, foreign segment from the outside to it now it is club with it and we are calling it as a r dna molecule recombinant dna molecule with us and we have transformed into the bacteria now we are just directly looking that there is a expression is possible or not so the bacteria has already uh, gained this plasmid molecule so whenever the bacterial cell do a division 1 2 2 uh, 2 2 2 4 then the, we are knowing that uh, it following the uh, logarithmic graph and with the logarithmic graph the growth curve is we are knowing in the bacteria it will start to follow the procedures of their growth and it generally follow the binary fission so this is very easy and we can confirm also using certain selectable markers so we are going to learn about the what are the selectable markers in the second to third part presentation that 
whether the plasmid is introduced or not and how we can confirm it. So this part we are going to learn and ultimately what we are looking for the certain product that is like a polypeptide as we have desired for the insulin. We have started with the insulin, one of the example that can be taken. So basic summary, I'm just looking to summarize for this PowerPoint presentation. It's like a plasmid. One is the donor DNA cut with the restriction enzyme. Both are now having the sticky ends and the ligase enzyme is going to be used to prepare the clone. And this clone is going to be transferred to our host cell. And this is going to secrete our polypeptide chain in our form of a proteinic molecule. And it's, we are calling as an insulin. So what are the applications? So since long I'm telling about it. So few basic two to three points I've just included. That is like a production of a hemolyn used for the diabetic person. Also like a plant applications. One of the example is the golden rice. It is being prepared in a form of a, uh, against to vitamin A deficiency. Also been used in the gene therapy when the person is uh, having the certain problem. Like one of the examples I have uh, quoted here it is cystic fibrosis. We know about the cystic fibrosis is the problem related to the abdomen. Some of the person, it is a genetic uh, error and sometimes a heredity also been found that their abdomen intestine is became very enlarged. Always the uh, inflammation is happen inside the body and the person is uh, feeling every day painful. So such kind of error is a problem happen in cystic fibrosis. So there we can use the RDNA technology to as this person. Uh, pre also preparation is the diagnostic kits. Uh, here we are currently knowing like a COVID-19 era is there. So many news is are coming that uh, scientists are trying to develop this and that. Also, we are looking for the vaccine also. So what the vaccine in actually people are looking? Uh, genetically engineered like RDNA molecules you may prepare. What part should be prepared? So we know like a COVID-19 is a, like a uh, their globular structure is there. We may take either of their membrane part or the envelope part to be prepared as a certain uh, prominent epitope. And uh, you know about the certain immunological concept inside the epitope and paratope. Epitope is what? Very antigenic property molecule from any pathogen. When we are introducing inside the body, uh, it can provoke the immunogenic response. So currently in the COVID-19 era, we people are knowing that so many candidate uh, antibodies are now, or you can say the, uh, sorry, uh, candidate vaccines are currently the prepared by certain like Oxford University and others are also planning within our India also like Bharat Biotech are planning to develop into it. So what the people are trying to do, they are just take it out certain gene segment. Here you may be knowing dear friend that is a COVID-19 is related to RNA virus, okay. The such RNA virus is there. So from there, you need to prepare first a cDNA. And with this cDNA, you are going to transform to the certain bacteria or some of the place to manipulate it and for further actions and reactions. So we are going to uh, learn in a way that, that how each of the place when the particular targeted work is required, then targeted therapy is given. So also been used in the plant, we, uh, sometimes uh, like a transgenic uh, plants are there. One of the example is like a weed killer or the vitamin A. We are also knowing about the BT concept, like a BT cotton. There it has been like a cryogen has been transformed to the cotton. And nowadays uh, we know that uh, it is uh, proven like a Monsanto has started such long being in 2003. Now the uh, thing has happened like that successful, it has gone for decade, but uh, with certain uh, error, we come to know that uh, RDNA molecule, what we have prepared long back and it was running in the cotton, but having certain issues. So what are the issues were there nowadays? Uh, just to make you brief about it, th that cotton is a, like a plant and over that it is start to uh, develop the certain cryogenes. Now the, it's cryogen is against to some lepidoderm like an insect. So either insect get more resistance or in another way, you can say like that, that a protein secretions not reduce, it is there itself. But the competency of the, uh, the lepidopteran uh, for it is reduced. So nowadays you can found out that, uh, that it's the cotton, especially prepared in a form of earlier, the BT cotton were there, it is not exactly working as with their own efficiency. So we need to alter the type of a protein over this, the cry protein alterations can be possible and new kind of a BT cotton is required to be prepared. Also in the case of a certain uh, microorganism that is human insulin are there. 
uh, before going because uh, i uh, thought that one of the example need to show in a form of a one animated movie which is uh, somewhat very funniest thing but you are really going to enjoy it is of about 3 uh, minutes only <coughs> sorry it is about the 3 minute only and what is going to uh, show about it? it's related to the hemophilia you need you are knowing that hemophilia is a rare disorder and what going to happen the person are not getting the blood get clotted and this blood clotting is making the hamper the person at a low low uh, so many places and how our genetic engineering approach or the recombinant dna can helpful to the person that we are going to see in this animated movie this is bob bob dreams of being a world renowned soccer player He wants to play in the biggest leagues and in the biggest games, but there's a major issue stopping him from attaining this goal, and that's his rare and severe case of hemophilia. He bleeds a lot from everywhere. His skin is very sensitive, and so he gets wounds often. He experiences pain and swelling in his joints, mostly in his knees, elbows, and ankles. And when he goes to the bathroom, there's more blood to lose. So let's get into exactly what causes these symptoms. This is a DNA molecule, and its genes are responsible for giving us our characteristics. Their genes are responsible for making proteins called clotting factors. The clotting factors are what help us clot blood and stop wounds from bleeding. Unfortunately for Bob, the gene for a certain type of clotting factor called factor 7 is not working properly, and that's why it experiences these symptoms. Now let's see the effect of this within the body. Here we have a blood vessel and of course it has plasma and red blood cells inside. The blood is flowing normally, but let's say you get a wound. There's going to be a tear in the blood vessel, making it lose a lot of blood. Now what usually happens is the clotting factors will stop the blood, helping in the sealing of the tear. But for Bob, because they're not working properly and they're not as abundant, they'll not be able to stop the bleeding. But how do we fix all of this? The answer is recombinant DNA technology, which refers to a series of procedures used to join together DNA segments from different species, and you'll see what two DNA segments we combine later on. In treating Bob's case of hemophilia, we're going to use recombinant DNA technology to produce a bunch of clotting factors. And this is done by taking the factor 7 gene and having it replicate inside bacteria. We do this using a plasmid vector. A plasmid is a circular DNA molecule that exists outside the bacteria's main DNA. It can safely carry the clotting factor gene into the bacteria and have it replicate. The plasmid also contains genes that give the bacteria special advantages, and one of these advantages is antibiotic resistance. This plasmid in particular is a PBR322 plasmid and has a tetracycline resistant gene and an ampicillin resistant gene. So the first step for getting the factor 7 gene to replicate is to insert it into the plasmid. This is done using restriction enzymes. They cleave in the plasmid at locations called restriction sites, which contain specific DNA sequences recognized by the restriction enzymes. Each restriction enzyme recognizes a specific sequence, and so when it comes across it, it will cut it from the plasmid. In this case, we're using a restriction enzyme EcoR1. Now that the EcoR1 restriction enzyme has cut at its restriction site, we can insert the factor 7 gene in the plasmid. This is now a recombinant DNA molecule since we have combined DNA segments from two sources, the plasmid from the bacteria and the clotting factor gene. The second step is to get the plasmid into the bacteria, which is done by bathing the plasmids in the bacteria in a calcium chloride solution, which makes it easier for the bacteria to take up the plasmids. Let's take a closer look at what exactly happens in the solution. As you can see, the bacteria and the plasmids are submerged and our goal is to get the plasmids into the bacteria. Most of the bacteria actually won't take up the plasmids. It might be that only one or two take up the plasmids, so that's why we put in many copies. And even worse, we can actually see which bacteria took up the plasmids and which didn't. In order to separate the ones that did take up the plasmid and the ones that didn't, we have to culture them in antibiotics. Why? Well, remember the plasmid can give special advantages such as antibiotic resistance. The plasmid we use had resistance to the antibiotic ampicillin. Only the bacteria that took up the plasmid containing the ampicillin resistant gene would survive. Slowly, each bacterium without the plasmid would die. Once we have the bacterium with the plasmid, we can replicate it. And those bacteria can make the clotting factors since they all have the factor 7 gene in their plasmid. After they make the clotting factors, we extract them and mix them with sterile water so they can be injected. Now, we can give the injection to Bob and he'll feel much better. Maybe, just maybe, he could chase his soccer dreams after all. So friends, you are able to see that how the plasmid has been prepared, uh, that we are going to learn about the PBR322 in the uh, next my presentations, that you are able to learn that uh, that are having the ampicillin and tetracycline resistance <clears throat> and this is going to be used in like a blue white screening 
uh, before that uh, she has also shown our like a calcium chloride treatment this has been used in the transformation technique so this transformation technique has been used to transfer the plasmid to the host here it was like e coli and how they have prepared such factors and these factors are been given to the such person it the problems were may reduce so here just uh, i am ending up uh, my first uh, presentations and i am looking to move further for uh, next point that is related to now the manipulation of a dna uh, and the purified dna uh, here we are going to learn about the what are the basic enzymes are that are participating here the our major role is related to that that a manipulation of the D purified dna here the first time i have taken the dna before going that just uh, some basic outline i just uh, to say that what i'm going to discuss into this powerpoint like uh, some basic introductory part range of the dna manipulative enzyme enzyme for the cutting and ligation so we are going to learn about the certain <coughs> sorry enzymes that are participating into manipulation of a dna then we are going to learn about the restriction enzyme and the ligase enzyme so in detail we are going to learn each and every things and we uh, 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 give your attention here friends the thing is that the from every time in the neck exams or any of the exams are in the net are there uh, there the at least two to four questions are falling from this powerpoint presentations always uh, at least two to three questions are coming always into from this area so without wasting much time just i would like to directly move for the range of manipulative enzymes here we are going to learn more in detail like a four one is like nuclease second like a ligase polymerase and modifying enzyme so each and every things we are going to learn one by one first is a nuclease there are the two kind of a nuclease are there one is a exonuclease second is a endonuclease enzyme what are their actions and reactions just some of the picturizations i have kept here the what is the exonuclease exonuclease is going to cleave the dna or chop the dna or you can say the cut the dna at their ending that is a exonuclease start from their end from both the end it is not like that uh, from only one end they it like and it will start with the one end only it will start to digest the dna from the both the end what about the endonuclease endonuclease here it was like exo that is a exit place endo its between meaning is between so here we uh, can see the things like uh, here the dna is there that can be cut from the middle of the part now the first dna has been cut into two different segments and this first segments can be cut is a red arrow is showing that it is going to cut the first half into two different and the second molecule you can see the two arrows were been shown so it can able to cut into three fragments so the difference between exo and endo is what exo is going to start the cut from the ending endo is starting the cut at the middle so uh, what are the thing is there some of the example uh, dear friend uh, just try to recall such kind of a things in your mind that certain time especially related to the e coli exonuclease 3 they are asking the question that uh, what are the exonuclease are there and how they are doing the cutting here you can see like a ball 3 one it's a kind of enzyme from the uh, bacillus species that is the ball 3 one having the activity that is uh, start to cut the directly double that is a, like a, from the 5 prime to 3 prime both the end exo end is there it start to cut their nucleotide but the peculiar characteristic of exonuclease 3 is what it is only able to cut at the 3 prime so it is going to generate our double stranded sequence was there that is going to be a like a single stranded it's may uh, form like a sticky ends are been generated it is only able to cut at the 3 prime end only one nucleotide is going to get loosen up so some uh, one sort animation part is there there are the more than 5 to 7 type of exonuclease are available so how they are working some some basic uh, i have included uh, one uh, uh, documentary about a 3 2 to 3 minutes there uh, let's uh, discuss and see it exonucleases are enzymes that catalyze the removal of nucleotides mm -hmm. in either the 5 prime to 3 prime or the 3 prime to 5 prime direction from the ends of single stranded and or double stranded dna removal of nucleotides is achieved by cleavage of phosphodiester bonds via hydrolysis these important enzymes 
can have slightly different activities and therefore can be used for a wide variety of applications. Most exonucleases digest at nicks in the DNA. Some exonucleases remove one base at a time. Lambda exonuclease is an example of this and transforms double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA by chewing from the free end containing a 5' phosphate, degrading one strand preferentially but not the other. Other examples are exo-1 and exo-3. Other exonucleases such as T5, exo-5, or exo-7 remove short oligos. The products of T5 exo and exo5 digestion also include individual bases. Exonucleases such as exo7 and 5 digest in both the 5 prime to 3 prime and the 3 prime to 5 prime direction, while others such as exot and exo1 only work in one direction. Some exonucleases such as exo1 and exot only digest single-stranded DNA while leaving behind double-stranded DNA. This can be useful to remove PCR primers, for example. So, there are the depend upon the type of experimentations you are planning, one has to select the type of a restriction enzyme for your net purpose and for the other exams, this is it and the others are, uh, uh, exams are there. For that purpose, I have included very specific things the, for that, the some exam uh, in the exam, uh, they are asking the certain question. And most important question is that like S1 endonuclease. It's a very peculiar thing is that what S1 endonuclease only able to act on the single stranded DNA. Here you can uh, visualize the picture as the sun is there. The single stranded uh, form is there, so it can make a cut at the in between. Here you can say it's a part B is showing that is like a uh, one part is there. There is a nick. If there is a no nucleotide is available, you can call it as a nick into the DNA. So here, the when the nick is also available, S1 endonuclease can do a cutting. So it can cut to both the nucleotide from their end. As the let's move further, further like a DNA S1, it's also we are isolated from like a cow pancreas, and the, it can both it can cut at the both single stranded DNA as well as double stranded DNA. Be careful, S1 is only useful for the single stranded DNA. DNS1 can work on the both. That is for the single stranded DNA as well as double stranded DNA. And uh, dear friends, you may be aware and otherwise you are doing certain experimentations like uh, DNA isolation and RNA isolation. So in case of uh, RNA isolation, DNA is a problematic. So we are giving at the last stage DNA enzyme uh, treatment. So this, this place we are using this DNS1 generally frequently and mostly been used as a DNS1 as the treatment during the RNA isolation. So it can cut at the both single stranded DNA as well as the double stranded DNA. Uh, as looking, moving ahead, some of the restriction endonuclease are there which are recognizing their particular site. Uh, that's part I'm going to take uh, more detail in restriction endonuclease. Maybe it is in coming in the next coming slides uh, after specific things. Let's discuss about certain things in ligase. We, uh, we have already seen about the ligase uh, in our first presentations also that DNA ligase can join two molecules. That is like a two different molecules are there. We are going to learn into the next part here in this PowerPoint only that uh, there are the two kind of uh, ends are the blunt and the uh, sticky ends are the, how it is been going to bind with one to another. So let's move further without much wasting a time. Uh, that is like a polymerase enzyme. What are the kind of a polymerase enzymes are there? There are the major four are being called as a polymerase, DNA polymerase one, clean off fragment, take DNA polymerase and reverse transcriptase. These are the limited name I have taken, but based on the applications I have included there and classified into four. Uh, first is like a DNA polymerase one. What is their basic activity generally being used uh, when you, we people are knowing like, a uh, uh, one particular in PCR experimentations uh, we are knowing or else in a general and uh, basic things in DNA replication is also taking place. It requires the primase enzyme to develop a primer. So what the polymerase is doing some basic uh, reaction. I'm just telling that it extend. It's a C prime end here. You can say that 
three prime aid is extended like newly synthesized strand is showing okay so here it is a uh, five to prime to three prime aid is that the three prime aid is, is extended so if we can say that polymerization is taking place from five prime to three prime direction so three prime end is extended what are the basic peculiarity of the dna polymer is one is that whenever it can be used to primer extension as well as when is there is a nick filling nick is there here you can see one of the part is there uh, three to four nucleotides are not available so what dna polymer is one is going to do it going to bind here like atg and it start to fill the portion like a g is there afterward here you can see the picture isosense like g c a t t and most important thing that i would like to share here and test, uh, to say that here it do having the dual activity what is mean by dual activity it can do the polymerase activity as well as nuclease activity that means here the dna polymerase one it's able to find that g c a t so many nucleotides are there so it is going to remove one by one one by one one is going to remove and replacing with a new uh, nucleotide and it is going to uh, replace with the same nucleotide only it is not like the g will be shifted to a or t no it is going to replace but it is having the both the activity nuclease as well as polymerase activity and this been governed by the nuclease activity is governed by the first two half of the, it's like a 323 amino acid are there out of like a 1 kb uh the thousand amino acid is there. the first part is taken by 323 so second part that uh, clino fragment is known like in dna polymerase one if this nucleus activity we are not interested so what we can do we can chop it we can uh, chop this dna polymerase into two half so second half is only having the polymerase activity and this been used to fill the nick of uh, over the places so here you can see that uh, Uh, the clino fragments like atg molecules were there it is been having the some space the clino fragment is going to do one most important job what it is going to fill this place like c a t t is been filled but dear friend just look upon it at the end there is a no bonding is there phosphodiester bond is required to happen here the thing is like that it does not having the nuclease activity so it can add at the 5 prime to 3 prime directions but the at the 3 prime to next 5 prime end one nucleotide is sitting but it cannot able to merge them this merging is required to be done by then the next enzyme called dna ligase so here we may need the help of the dna ligase to complete the gap filling so depend upon our exercises we may uh, need to develop the certain assays Uh, one most important like a uh, take dna polymerase i'm not going to take the some uh, video clips uh, the rest of it will like more time and our main aspect is related will be not able to complete so we are knowing like a take dna polymerase is mainly used in the pcr what is the basic characteristic of dna polymerase one is that like a dna polymerase it can withstand the high degree temperature while like a 95 to 96 degree temperature is there even the activity catalytic activity of dna polymerase cannot be disturbed and it can develop the multiple copies like a pcr that is a pc uh, artificial uh, copying of our dna can be performed next is a like reverse transcriptase it is also kind of a polymerase only but what it's the difference is that the reverse transcriptase always use the rna as a template other than all what i have discussed they take the dna as a template Here the RNA is going to be used as a template, and reverse transcriptase will going to add. Here it's also required certain primer to start the its activity. So it is going to add the new DNA. So uh, though it's using the C, uh, one of the RNA as a molecule as a template, but the resulting the new strand is going to be a DNA. so it is the totally different than the previous what we have discussed and the reverse transcriptase is been used to synthesize cdna here the cdna is uh, the meaning is what the strand newly synthesized it's from the you can say like mrna from the mrna to new dna synthesize is called the complementary dna and this complementary dna in a short form we are calling as a cdna so let's move further for the certain dna modifying enzyme what are the dna modifying enzymes are there 
there are the three major and dear friends uh, this is the three major enzymes have been used for various kind of activity in uh, you can say in genetic engineering or in rdn technology or uh, exam part of you is also most important because at least one question is always been asked related to out of three three enzyme it is the uh, like a, a fundamental things been asked uh, by the every examiner so they are very uh, founded about this certain three enzymes what are the basic characteristics like alkaline phosphatase it remove the phosphate group at the five prime end what is the polynucleotide kinase is doing that is the reverse of it it is going to add the five prime end uh, some phosphate group that fellow is doing to remove the uh, phosphate here it's going to add the phosphate and what is the terminal transferase is going to do it is going to add one or two nucleotide so that same can be learned with some visualization here like alkaline phosphatase here you can see that in a first figure that was a phosphate group was there it is been removed from the 5 prime end and it is now it's going to have the hydroxyl only that oh group is there okay uh, then uh, polynucleotide kinase what it can do there was at a 5 prime end there was a oh now we are going to replace with the phosphate why this kind of a, such a reaction or reaction is been required or used earlier when we people are looking to develop the certain prop you may be knowing like in southern blottings uh, after the doing the agarose cell electrophoresis that are southern blotting or uh, probe is required this probe is required to be get labeled with certain uh, radioactive compounds so here the second part is there uh, that is uh, like a phosphate is here been prepared or synthesized which going to have a particular radioactive labeled phosphate so we can develop the radioactive compound based certain probe so this is the main active characteristics of uh, alkaline phosphatase and polynucleotide kinase and this questions also been asked in the exams a lot time next part is related to terminal deoxy nucleotidyl transferase people are calling uh, in a short abbreviated form with the uh, terminal transferase what is going to do it having the uh, activity to add the nucleotide at the 3 prime if it is like a single stranded dna so it is going to add the nucleotide at the 3 prime if it is a double stranded dna is there so there is a addition of a nucleotide at the 3 prime at the both the end both the end there is a extension of a nucleotide will be there and this may be used to develop some time linkers or some uh, other thing is there where you are looking to develop certain kind of a sticky end if you are looking to generate that we can use such kind of an enzyme so uh, let's move ahead i think it is uh, one of the basic uh, uh, animation is there but uh, because of a time limitations if uh, that is about 5 to 8 minutes there so i'm avoiding uh, to uh, show it it is just about this powerpoint uh, uh, you may uh, able to take it uh, from uh, YouTube also, I have uh, put it here, the YouTube link also. So it is same about the what I have discussed, the, all the enzymes. The same thing has been uh, for in the format of the animated part is shown, but it is about five to eight minutes and we need to cover the so many concepts. So I'm uh, going to move ahead with the next part. Hi, biology. Okay, uh, let's discuss about the restriction enzyme. The restriction enzyme, just since also I was discussing, the most important thing, the questions being asked is this one, the host control mechanism. That means the DNA is uh, one of the E. coli. We know about the like restriction enzyme, it has the E. coli R1. If you just uh, uh, take it out, the pro, uh, DNA from the E. coli, and if you are uh, going to uh, develop there, uh, sequencing also then you come to know that eco r1 site is also available within the cell within the cell and within the dna of itself uh, e. coli, the genomic dna that is the genomic dna itself having certain eco r1 restriction sites uh, recognition sites are there but why this uh, restriction enzyme is not going to cut their own dna the reason behind thing, that is the methylation the bacterial dna is having the methylation of a dna and this methylation 
is restricting the restriction enzyme to cut from their end. So what's going to happen at the restriction enzyme side, that is the eco R1 sites are there. Generally, it's what going to happen that methylation is making a clamp, like a clamping is there. So restriction enzyme is not able to cut, but it is the mechanism that host control in a way that whenever the restrict a uh, fudge DNA is trying to insert its DNA. When the DNA has been inserted, which we know that it's from the foreign part. And as and when it's coming from the foreign part, it does not possess the methylation, what is being found in the E. coli. And this without the methylation is there. So restriction enzyme are now ready that they are going to find they are roaming inside the cell only. If they are able to find the DNA is roaming and it having the restriction enzyme side, it start to cut. So fudge DNA is when being inserted is going to be get cut by the certain enzyme. The such sort of the things making uh, very much uh, controlled and uh, immunity boosting for the uh, viruses, uh, against the viruses for the bacteria. And for that, for the viruses, we come, uh, knows that uh, they are also been called as a bacterial fudge. So, so many things are there. And yeah, there are the three type of uh, enzyme, restriction enzyme are there, type one, type two, and type three are there. Type one and two are not being used in much in genetic engineering. The reason is what, like uh, uh, type one is there. The restriction side is available at one place it's going to recognize and it's going to cut the DNA at the very may maybe a thousands or 15,000 base pair away. So it is of a no use. So we people are using the type two kind of a DNA. There are so many listed is there. Out of it, some important restriction enzymes I'm just telling to you. Dear friend, uh, it may be a difficult, but uh, try to re recall and remember about these four restriction enzyme sites are there because this has been asked in the examination point of view, I'm telling uh, at least one question is always asked that either of the four that are the given uh, right, uh, tell about the uh, restriction site or they may give the restriction site is there and uh, match the following. So many things formats are always been asked related to certain for enzyme. So what are the things that they're going to develop the blunt end as well as sticky end. So this kind of a, a, a thing is there and artificially how we can perform that just I have shown in the picturization is there that you uh, one of the example is taken for the lambda DNA. You may take the lambda DNA, you may add the certain buffer specific for the restriction enzyme, add the restriction enzyme, give for the incubations for the one uh, hour and uh, add the certain chemicals like uh, phenol or EDTA or the heat treatment. Uh, just the thing for the Last, we need to add the certain agents are the reason is for the block the procedure. Otherwise, what's going to happen if you are not able to uh, uh, block the uh, this enzyme, then the, uh, you may know about the star activity. That means the restriction enzyme after prolonged time, if you're going to give, they become a furious. Uh, the furious meaning what? They are now going to cut at any random place and your DNA or then the restrictions also get cut. So to avoid the star activity, we have to uh, perform in a particular task or way only. So let's move further. That is like electrophoresis. So whenever you are doing the restriction digestions, we need to perform the uh, electrophoresis. And this electrophoresis is going to allow you like a transfer of the material. That is uh, basic techniques that I'm not taking, going to discuss more uh, right now. That is like a DNA is a negatively charged, so it's going to uh, move towards the anode that is a positive part. And on a gel, you can see that the certain fragments are being formed. That is the restriction enzyme has cut it, the DNA and the fragments can be observed. Now the next step is for, or really we are looking for the RDNA technology. So we have cut the DNA uh, of our desired fragment. We do have the uh, second part is uh, our cloning vector. So what to do into it? The blunt and the sticky ends are there. So for that, uh, keep it in your diary also that like E. coli DNA ligase is the one of the best example for it being used into a molecular biology experimentation and it can ligate the cohesive end. Uh, keep it in your diary also that what is the role of DNA ligase that it can bind the, the two DNA segments. Okay, and here the what is the particular uh, thing is there 
DNA ligase is going to bind the DNA for E. coli. It's a cohesive end, sticky end. And what is the peculiar characteristic of T4 DNA ligase? It can bind uh, both. Uh, sticky ended as well as the blunt ended DNA can be bound with one to another. So by this, uh, I'm just uh, ending my presentation here. Uh, we do have a, a lot time period with us, about one hour, and so many things need to include. Before going, uh, just I'm uh, looking to uh, move forward for the certain questions. Uh, this I'm just going to show in a format of a word file I have just prepared. The some important questions already been asked into the various examinations. Certain I have uh, prepared for you people to discuss. Let's say that with you, uh, if you are having the time, you can just uh, do one thing. You can uh, uh, either do a screenshot, otherwise later you can also note it down in your diary. Just I'm going to explain the questions very quickly. So we are, without wasting time, I'm uh, taking the some questions. Yeah, one of the question is that the first human protein produced through recombinant DNA technology is what? Like a humulin, casein, SE2, or the insulin. So earlier also in my discussion, I have told that don't get confused. That's like both the example are here, humulin and insulin. So what we are looking, we are just only looking for the answer as a insulin. That time also I have discussed that uh, though it is from the human, but that time it was not been called as a humulin. It was been termed as an insulin because the only certain parts were available. The whole not a segment and this was been synthesized in E. coli. And the humulin were the later stage been synthesized from the mice. Next part is like a plasmid consistor consisting of its own DNA with a foreign DNA inserted into it is called what? Subsequent, recombinant, replicant or the applicant. So we are going to look that uh, since long we are talking about the recombinant DNA technology, that means plasmid with desired fragment. When it is going to bind with one to another, we are going to call as a recombinant DNA. So that part was there. Then the third question is that a type of a restriction endonuclease, find it out among uh, given the option that which recognize and methylates a single sequence but cleaves the DNA up to 1000 base pair away. So that time I have told that restriction enzyme are of a one, two, and three type. So type one is doing what? It's uh, identify the sequence at a particular recognition site, but doing its activity at a larger far away. And also just uh, have, uh, uh, as I was asking about the, to remember and recall the restriction enzyme, it is here. Like GAA, TTC, recognition site is for what? Which enzyme is there? So it is for the equar one. GGA TTC is for the BAM H1 and AAG CTT is for the HIN3. So every time at least one question been asked about it. And yeah, the sequence have the axis rotational symmetry known as what? Epidemic, pandemic, oleandromic, or paleandromic. That means the restriction side, cohesive side are formed in a way that these are having the mirror image and this mirror image is called the paleandromic sequence. Uh, next question is like restricts an enzyme that possess identical recognition site and cleavage site is known as what? That means what? Suppose ECOR1 having this restriction site is GAATTC and if for the HIN3 also it is like a GAATTC is there then ECOR1 and HIN3 for one to another they are called as isoschiasmers. That is means both are having the recognition site as a same or identical. Next question is S1 endonuclease only cleaves which DNA? Yeah, uh, that time also in PowerPoint presentation, I have told that uh, do remember that is a single stranded DNA has been cleaved by the end of nuclease. So the answer could be here is a SS. Yeah, next question is DNA polymerase possess which kind of a following activity? Nuclease, polymerase, both or none of this? Yeah. That time also I have discussed that DNA polymerase one having the both the activity. That means exonuclease activity. After the nick filling, it's going to move ahead and ahead. The next part is related to clean of fragment. It does not possess nuclease activity, only polymerase. Then the next question is the dam methylase. Yeah. Is required for the prevent nuclease activity. This methylase enzyme, uh, as we just uh, I have shown about the restriction enzyme, uh, that time I just told that. Uh, methylation is done 
on the genomic DNA. So this methylation is done by, by whom? Methylase enzyme. So it does not allow restriction enzyme to cut their own DNA. Okay. Next is related to like molecular stickers or gluer. What are the called as a gluer? We know it's like a DNA ligase. Few questions are more like exonucleus means cutting the nucleotide from one end of a DNA. Uh, that yeah. Can we can say like exonuclease only going to cut at the one end? No, the enzyme having the cutting site at the both the end. So it will start to cut from the both the places. So the given statement is false. T7 DNA polymerase has which kind of exonuclease activity? Uh, 3 prime to 5 prime, 5 prime to 3 prime, cannot say, or none of the above. So here it's been asked as exonuclease activity. That means it is from 3 prime to 5 prime. And when it is been as a DNA polymerase, which uh, kind of activity that is a polymerase activity is been asked that is five prime to C prime. Dear friend, this question 15 and 16 always been asked and the student get confused. Either of the way they are get confused. That is the which thing is been asked T7 polymerase exonuclease activity is a three prime to five prime and polymerase activity is in 5 prime to 3 prime. Don't get confused. Keep it writing in your diary so it will be more useful for you. Further, it's like a lambda DNA is obtained from a microbes so recombinant molecule phage or plasmid. So lambda DNA we are going to learn that it's a lambda phage and it's kind of a phage only. Yeah, which DNA ligase is mostly in genetic engineering. So here we just in the last slide I have shown about the E. coli DNA ligase and D4 DNA ligase. So answer will be both that this both the enzymes are being mostly used in the genetic engineering or DNA technology. Three more questions that is related to the last, uh, before that uh, I have discussed about the one of the slide that uh, related to the phosphate group removal. That is a five prime phosphate group removal is done by alkaline phosphatase. Reverse work is done by the, that is the addition of a five prime and the phosphate group. It is polynucleotide kinase and the addition of a uh, nucleotide at the three prime terminals is done by the terminal transferases. So I hope you have a, a either you can do the same time you can uh, make a screenshot or else the uh, afterwards also you may go through the same link or whatever is there in you are using on the YouTube or WhatsApp uh, or uh, you are using on the Facebook that uh, you may note it down in your diary later stage also. Uh, okay, uh, let's move further for our third presentation that is a part of our uh, discussion today's. I hope uh, the some of the time is there, I will able to cover the as much as possible. Okay, uh, that is related to cloning vector. Let's move further for the cloning vector. Okay, Viral sir, go ahead, please. Oh, yeah, no thank issue. you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, okay, what are the cloning vector? The most important part is it's you can say like a vehicle vector is the we also know that some people uh, are having the bike as a vector even now uh, that is from the uh, one of the ship that is a vector the vj ship where we are calling that was been used as a, some iron part where been there that been used that is for our uh, from the navy they have started to sell and the certain iron part will be used in the vector that is related to some moped or bike but here the vector is calling for the our DNA. We are looking for the transfer of, we need to transfer our desired segment. The DNA of our desired segment is there that we need to transfer from this place to our host. The transferring is required certain additive tools. So we are going to learn the certain tools to transfer. So same thing is also being told in the Y calling vector is required. Without cloning vector, molecular gene calling is not possible. So we need to need have to have certain vectors to transfer. Some basic the, uh, uh, historical part is there. Just I'm looking to add that is the scientists like a uh, Boyer, uh, Itakura, and Riggs uh, working in the Boyer's lab at California University. They have started to work upon these exercises, and in 1973. One of the first successful construction of recombinant vector was there. And the first was for E. coli, and that was known as PSC 101. Keep uh, in your mind about the, this statement and the next, what I'm going to say, that is in 1977, uh, they described the first vector design for the cloning purpose, and that was a PBR 322. 
of plasmid. The two questions are always been asked in the certain examination that which was the first successful construct of the RD uh, uh, recombinant vector. Then don't forget about the PSC 101 and the in E. coli that was a host and for the same host that is for the design the next vector and it was really functional and got the real success. The real success has been uh, found for the cloning particular purpose that is a PBR322. So we are going to learn more in detail about the each on the next. Some basic uh, ch uh, chart I have prepared uh, uh, that is uh, related to uh, for in which years that is like a 1960s onwards you can see that uh, uh, work related to it's going on you can see that is in uh, near about in 1970s near uh, that is in uh, 1978 Nobel Prize were given to the Smith Arbor and Nathan for discovery of a restriction enzyme so they have discovered the restriction enzyme near about in 1968 but for uh, to them, uh, Nobel Prize was given to after 10 years because it has gain, gone, gained a lot of attention and this has revolutionized total molecular biology concept just basic with one tool called the restriction enzyme. So uh, let's move further. Let's discuss about the certain features of a cloning vector. Wait just a minute. Yeah. Uh, what are the basic features of the cloning vector? It should possess. Here we are going to learn the vector. It is we are keeping in our mind first. It is like a circular in nature, right? But what the circular nature it going to possess? So it should have the origin of replication. The site of a ORI site we are calling as it must be there. The reason is what it should be independently able to replicate itself. So vector must have the ORI site. Second is called the cloning site. Here you can see like a origin of replication, the picturization is on. Red is the origin of replication. Other part is called the multiple cloning site. Here the several restriction enzyme sites are available. So you can transfer or the using the ligase enzyme, you can ligate your desired DNA with it. So it is called the cloning site. Other than that, it is been called as a drug resistant genes. Why it is required? It may be a, like a selectable marker, or you can say the uh, next part is like a, a report and then is there. Here, same thing uh, found is here, like a selectable marker, which allow the host cell to survive. Here, in your or, or, uh, my first presentation's uh, last uh, animated movie is also there, like it was telling about PBRT22. It was it having the tetracycline as well as ampicillin resistant genes. So ampicillin resistant genes were allow the only the transform bacteria to grow on a plate. So this is the most important is the selectable marker and the reporter marker. These are the reporter marker is used for the for the screening. That is uh, which in the, uh, which of the out of the mind uh, uh, working on the uh, this RDNS uh, uh, transformation, which bacterial cell has received my uh, actual DNA transformed DNA is there or not? So we are going to learn about this blue white screen in the next coming slide. Some of the additional properties also there. It should be small, competitive uh, with vector, and able to work in the both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So my, some small movie is there about five to seven minutes. Uh, but I'm not looking to take even this uh, documentary. It is very basic thing is there. Some uh, animated part where so on that uh, it is like a copying, it's showing like a Xerox machine that uh, cloning is what is actually meaning. So let's Being machine. move further, like a types. There are the two type of uh, vectors we are going to consider. That is a cloning vector and expression vector. So both are the same. Based on their application, we are going to call them as the cloning vector or the expression vector. Let's discuss about the like, cloning vector. A cloning vector is a vector when just we are aim to make copy like a xerox copy we are knowing right the same it is like that we are going to use the cloning vector to just to clone our desired segment and it is being uh, as and when the e coli cell is being transformed with it and the cell division is taking place so the, our e coli is going to exhibit the plasmid and the plasmid number is going to 
increase with the cell number is increasing so it is just copying of a dna and when it is termed as expression vector expression vector is there we, we are not just not interested into the copying of it but we are looking for a desired product that means the same desired segment also do possess the promoter operator what are the regulatory machineries are there also been exhibited by that that time we are going to call them as a expression vector so both could be possible so cloning vector uh, we can say like a plasmid phage hybrid vectors artificial chromosome we are going to learn one by one now and the expression vector is the same but it do possess the some regulatory part also so our desired product is either gene uh, product can be uh, taken as a protein or rna so what are the agents been used as a vector there are the four major classification there are, uh, other than that also some new terminologies are coming but they are either out of way directly fitting into it only we are going to learn about the each uh, here like a plasmid are of a two type pbr322 puc bacteriophages hybrid vector and artificial chromosome so we are going to learn one by one so what is the plasmid it is having the autonomous replicating double stranded extra, extra chromosomal dna that means what it having the ori site by this it can able to replicate within the bacterial cell and what is the size of it maybe ranging from the 1 to 200 kb and uh, yeah the most important question in the examinations people are asking that most general uh, plasmid may be used to clone dna up to what so it can take up to maximum 10 kb uh, keep it in your uh, diary also that a plasmid can in get a in, we can insert the dna up to maximum 10 kb not more than that there are the three type of plasmid the one is like a fertility plasmid second is a resistance plasmid and the third is a call plasmid let's discuss one by one like a fertility plasmid can perform the conjugation i hope you people have learned about the conjugation that the one uh, cell is the bacterial cell and another is there that is they uh, if those who are having the fertility plasmid they can develop the one pillus that is also called as like sex pillus is there so they can able to transfer the genetic material from one bacteria to another so it is been used in the conjugation and such plasmids are there it's called the fertility plasmid uh, resistance plasmid is been called when it contains the resistance against certain antibiotics that is like ampicillin resistance tetracycline resistance uh, so many other antibiotics are also available depend upon the type that can be included here and the cold plasmid that is a code for the protein that can kill the bacteria that means certain kind of a plasmids are there some of the like especially uh, uh, certain uh, streptococcus are there so many others uh, particular bacterial cell possess very particular kind of a plasmid and they contain the coding for certain protein when it is been uh, secreted outside the cell other than in nearby area another cell cannot grow another kind of a bacterial cell will be killed so it provide the immunity to them but here uh, uh, there are the three things but we are mainly going to work upon the resistance plasmid that is related to resistant to certain antibiotics so let's discuss one by one uh, like a plasmid vector same informations what just i have discussed earlier that is the first successful construction was related to psc 101 later on the series of a plasmids are available but for most important is like a pbr322 and puc series so what are the differences are there that uh, based on the size and the organism type of organism we can uh, separate it out in one to another so let's discuss one by one pbr322 for let's discuss about their nomenclature how it is known as a p stands for what b or r like p denotes as a plasmid p stands for plasmid b and r it's the name of a scientist uh, keep it uh, diary with you this is also important question been asked in the examination sometimes what is the full form related to pbr that is a bolivar and rodriguez the name of the scientist or the researcher who has developed such a plasmid and why the we have stick with the 322 number it is just numbering uh, it is based on the they have tra- started to prepare the certain kind of a plasmid from one to another by certain experimentation so they have developed in the same laboratory number of the plasmid like pbr 325 27 and so on the series were going on but best 
they able to find it out is a PBR three twenty two working very well. So what it do possess? They possess the two things like a ampicillin resistance genes and a tetracycline resistance. This is the most important key characteristics over here. Also, you are uh, able to recall in the, my first presentations last uh, slide that uh, an animated movie also they have shown like a tetracycline and ampicillin. This is the two sites are there like a PST one, BAM H one, and SAL one. If you are going to insert your DNA desired fragment, either of the one of the antibiotic resistance place, that means it will lost their resistance. If I'm going to cut this BAM H1 site and where I'm going to use uh, insert my desired fragment, then the whole segment of this DNA is going to disturb. So it can be used as a, uh, this can be used to the tetracycline resistance place. Uh, it's going to be used as selectable marker. Okay, so uh, how it is working actually. So let's see in the next slide. So. What are the characteristics are PBR322 possess the ORI site, selectable markers, it is a ampicillin and a tetracycline 2 antibiotic resistance, and the cloning site within the antibiotic resistance part is there. And this is the most important character is there that if you are going to disrupt or disturb uh, one particular, let's take the example like tetracycline resistance genes were disturbed and you have inserted your desired fragment. So it is also called as a insertional inactivation means what let's uh, understand with this picturization that means i have transferred my dna fragment to the mp uh, that is in tetra cycling area so now the uh, transform bacteria does not possess the tetra cycling resistance so how to identify for the identification purpose it is like a colonies on the ampicillin medium the after the uh, you have done the transformation uh, prepare the agar, uh, that is agar plate, add the ampicillin and the pour the slide. After the pouring, what you are able to find that is in agar plate, which can contain the ampicillin, non transform bacteria will not grow. Those does not have in the plasmid, that means the ampicillin resistance is not there. So they will not able to grow. But what those who are having the plasmid is only able to grow. But here we are going to look that. Plasmid is only inserted, or sometimes may happen that that uh, via ligation procedure, the plasmid may have sealed by itself. The sealing by itself is there. That is the desired DNA is not been transformed, and the tetracycline resistance is there. So we are going to separate it out two kind of a cell. First is a no plasmid insertion. Then the second is the plasmid insertion is there, but it do not possess any tetracycline deactivation and third part will be there uh, transform cell with having the tetracycline is disturbed that means it does not it do possess our desired gene so replica plating maybe people are knowing about it it's like a wooden block stamping from one to another plate touching so using this plate you may touch on the second place that is ampicillin medium to second is tetracycline medium and keep on the growing so if the certain colony is exhibited here you can see in the picture that if the colon is appearing on a plate, that means that it does not possess our desired segment. So now you may need to master plate and the replica plate you need to keep together and you need to find the colonies which are uh, only available into the master plate and does not appear in your replica plates. So these are the colonies, those who are having the our bacterial uh, cell with the plasmid and it do possess our desired segment. So this is the most important things and the since long is used as a model, model system and used for the cloning purpose. And yeah, just I have highlighted one of the most important question that is it's also used as the study for the prokaryotic transcription and translation procedure. Keep it in your diary, write it down that this system is used as in procure for transcription and translation. They may ask the question that which out of this listed plasmid PBR322, PUC and so many things are there, which vector is being used to study the transcription and translation procedure. So there you can utilize it. So uh, advantages are there very small in a size. Uh, there are the two selectable marker is there, thousands of copies also available. Some few disadvantages are there. It can accommodate limited size of the gene only. 
this is the about like a 10 kb i was just i told earlier also so it is lower in and sometimes the low copy number is observed within the cell the number of the copy of your plasmid are less so that to avoid this kind of a problem the puc vector has been designed here the p indicates the plasmid uc stands for the university of california and the series of the uh, vectors have been synthesized like 8 18 19 so on so 18 and 19 puc 18 and 19 are very well known and used in our experimentation what is the peculiar characteristic of puc 18 is there here it do possess the uh, ori side that is a replication side other than that it does do possess the ampicillin resistance and also it possess the lag set i uh, like to recall you uh, students dear friends to about the lac operon we know about the lac operon that is for the lactose utilization so we are going to just take the one lac part that is the lac z gene and we are going to introduce here and what we have modified it it also do going to possess certain restriction enzyme site so uh in our experimentation we are going to use it for our targeted part for the blue white screening what just i have told that i will discuss here uh, last uh, afterwards that is here so construction of puc is telling what it possesses the ori site as a selectable marker is ampicillin resistance and the lac z gene it is like a uh, report a gene whether it is been transformed or not that we are going to look so what is the main thing is there lac z is responsible for what beta galaxo uh, galactosidase actually it working on the lactose but here we are going to use the exga one of the chromogenic substance when the uh, beta galactosidase is working on it the exga is going to cut it down and the cutting will be going to produce the blue color so here the transformation is done or not that we are going to study over here and the, some iptg isopropyl uh, thiogalactose is used as a like a inducer of the uh, this gene so here we going to learn in a way that it do possess ampicillin resistance genes and a uh, bam h1 and the so many restriction sites are available and the lac z gene if we are going to introduce or the by chance our uh, bacterial cell has transformed with this kind of a plasmid the cell will exhibit blue color okay but if when as and when we have transformed our desired segment here it is the bam h1 restriction site is there you have used the cutter this bam h1 and you have inserted your dna fragment within to it that means now lac z is became inactive that means the lac z is generally working on the x gal and it's going to create what color blue color so blue color formation is required uh, or the is formed only because of lexan is intact uh, here what happened we have inserted our dna into it and because of that the segment is disturbed and this is going to create the white colony so here i have shown the some same thing with some picturization it became very easy so like a plasmid vector and the foreign dna is there if there is a foreign dna is not able to insert and just plasmid is introduced within the cell so here lac z gene is very much intact and in the bacterial cell is going to synthesize blue colony the next possible part is there by chance the foreign dna other than the restriction site is there somewhere is able to fuse and it's been transformed to the bacteria uh, here the lac z gene is in, intact and blue colony will be formed but our desired part is here it should be get inserted into lac z region and lac z region is introduced that means now lac z gene is get inactivated and it not able to work on the x gal and the blue color will be not formed and such cell colony will be appeared white so here you can see the blue white colonies blue color is just showing that bacterial cell is there but there is a no desired segment introduced white colony is appearing that means you can say that it do possess the plasmid also along with a our desired segment so i hope it is clear to you people uh, let's uh, discuss about the puc vectors their advantage and disadvantage so uh, this can be used uh, for the high copy number per the cell uh, easy and a single step selection it do possess the multiple selection side but just one disadvantage is there uh it cannot take the more than 15 kb earlier it was a 10 now we move up to 15 now let's discuss about the fudge 
there are the a bacteriophage of a uh, two type here you can see like a head and tail format is there second is a filamentous filamentous is there it is like a protein coat outside and within that dna molecule is lying there are the two are there lambda and m13 let's discuss about the lambda phage the most important questions always been asked from here somewhere lambda dna is double stranded dna but uh, at both their end some 12 base pair are lying or flanking as such which is uh, you can say the single stranded sticky end the lambda virus genome is about 48.5 kb over there the, at the both the end it is not double stranded at just uh, some flanking part is shown that is like a 12 base pair are just taking or flanking over there both the end and it's called as sticky end and it do possess a single stranded dna and it's also been called as like a sticky end or the cohesive end that means when the bacteriophage is infecting here uh, that we can see in the pictureization here that is like a lambda phage if you are circulated this segment whenever is going inside the body of the bacteria here you can see that when the infection is turned it circulate this cohesive site making is them as a plasmid otherwise is in linear form linear form is going to circulate when the infection is done so here how it is been done the like essential gene for the lysogenic cycle that is been cut the replacement of the region is done with the targeted dna so we can feed our uh, dna of a segment of our desired to the place we can replace it so it can be having the several advantage like it can handle 20 kb earlier it was up to 15 we may up to a 20 kb uh, some advantage you can say that it is very easy to perform transfection is very easy but the, the major disadvantage is there the isolation of the like lambda dna uh, to handle the phages is somewhat typical the most advantages is like a m13 best peculiar characteristics of uh, m13 is a single stranded dna containing keep it in your diary that m13 whole genome is single stranded and the genome size is here 6.4 okay uh, keep it in your diary the genome size of m13 is what how much 6.4 kb and it can insert the large size can be cloned so let's uh, so it's pictureization in a form that m13 here you can see that just one single strand is there single stranded dna is packed it is those seem appears like a double stranded but it is single stranded dna just in a sub super coil form it's there genome is a super coil single dna stranded dna is there how its uh, life cycle is there it form the pillars from the pillars itself its bacteriophage is, is going to infect whenever the pillus formation is there at any of the bacteria there it can infect their genome the single stranded dna has been uh, transferred so it is like a circular single dna you can see so first it's going to form into a double stranded dna and from the double stranded dna it's going to use the rolling circle model writing down you know diary what are the stages are there first is the single stranded dna is inserted it's going to be uh, form in double stranded from the double stranded dna the rolling circle mechanism is used and it will first uh, synthesize the linear dna and it's going to get circularized and packed into the phage material and this by exocytosis it is liberated out so same thing is i have written here so what the how the m13 is been prepared so what generally is done like a dotted line is flowing about the m13 then like a leg promoter was been introduced leg promoter operator and the leg z gene what we have used in the puc is been introduced here so it's became a vector and uh, it's been used uh, like a by a uh, blue white screening also we can identify our vector of our infection is there or not and specially been used in the dna sequencing note it down in your diary that which vector specially been used in the dna sequence mostly so here via sengas method for the molecular biology aspect because it having the single stranded dna and we just need to introduce our segment and mostly been used in dna sequencing also in phage display vectors that is mean what 
you can add the certain segments as a for a, a certain as, as in when you want to use as an expression vector that is certain proteins are formed on what kind of a for, uh, uh, this uh, protein is formed so whenever you are doing the your manipulation certain protein if it is exhibited it is going to form or develop on a membrane uh, sorry that is on a cot protein so you can just work it out on the cot protein whether the way a particular kind of a, a expression of the protein is there or not so, so such been used as a fast display vector some of the advantages is there very that can having the single stranded dna and use uh, very high but the disadvantage is that a low yield of a dna it's a major disadvantage but uh, out of this disadvantage also it having been used in the molecular biology a lot now let's talk about the hybrid vectors uh, i hope uh, i can complete uh, so few things are left even though like a component for the both plasmid and phage chromosome first time it be uh, synthesized by like 1970s like barbara horn and john collins there are the two ki kind of hybrid vectors could be possible cosmid and phasmid here what we are going to do just what i have discussed about the plasmid second was of phage so we will take the certain part from the phage certain part we are to going to take from the plasmid so such kind of things if you are able to fuse with one to another then we are going to call them as a hybrid vector so uh, what is mean by the cosmid here the dna sequence of like a cos sequence here it's written as a cosmid is equal to cos plus plasmid the cos sequence are originally taken from the lambda phage and it is fused to the plasmid while in case of phasmid the combination is taken with the phage m13 and the plasmid so both phage what i have discussed the lambda and m13 been utilized uh, and bound with the plasmid and we can generate the cos site and plasmid cosmid and phasmid so here you can see the actual picture like a cosmid it do possess the ampicillin resistance it polylinker is there and also possess the cos site so cos site is generally been uh, uh, utilized when the, you need to uh, complete the circle as we have seen that a double stranded dna, uh, dna was there in the lambda phage at the both the end are flanking the flanking region were going to get bound so such can exhibit a high number of uh, you can say the uh, 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 foreign dna molecule when you are looking for the phasmid it is the specific for the m13 phage so m13 do have the cot protein so here the protein is there you may use the restriction enzyme site and here you can introduce your desired segment some are the intergenic Uh, selective marker is there replication of the origin of the plasmid you can also put so you have taken the m13 and fused with the plasmid so uh, let's move further uh, i'm not looking to take that uh, uh, videos uh, artificial chromosome here the best important thing is what till now we are just looking for the plasmid itself now we are going to utilize the whole bacterial chromosome as a artificial chromosome you can also you go for the yeast artificial chromosome and go zone so most important for us like a back and yet so what is been done into the back that like a bacterial plasmid is been synthesized the dr desired segment is a bacterial plasmid with certain cos site are there or the restriction site are then gene of interest is been clubbed together that means a whole segment large segment is clubbed into the just a plasmid or i said and been transferred into hysteria coli or the e coli that means is the larger fragment it became the larger chromosome and when you are looking for the yeast artificial chromosome it is like same only you may take the larger part of the human dna you may transfer to the uh, yeast artificial uh, chromosome here we are looking just certain you can say like a ori site that will be clubbed and it will be been transferred to the yeast so the clone will be higher in number last point i am just going to look then we are going to have the certain questions that is like a subtle vector what is the subtle vector is there the subtle vector it's a construction of the both so when we are going to look some of the time that i want to uh, work it out with the same vector and this same vector i want to transfer in the e coli as well as in the yeast so it should exhibit at least two things that is like a sector uh, subtle vector is there 
there here it is having the antibiotic resistance genes or ori site for the bacteria ori site for the yeast as well as the here the desired part is like leucine biosynthesis genes lead to be work it out and the yeast tentro may sequence a multiple cloning site so easier in the multiple cloning site you can insert your desired segment so here this kind of a subtle vector is used for the main purpose it's like a you want to work it out the same with the cloning part in the e coli certain time and same vector can be used in the uh, special in the yeast so both the place you can use and work it out with same vector so one small documentary is there of about 2 to 3 minutes and very useful for all of us so let's see it then we will go for the some questions are there shuttle vectors so whenever you hear the term shuttle what comes into your mind so in my mind it reminds me of a shuttle taxi or a shuttle cab which take you from one place to another place right so shuttle vector are simply specially engineered plasmid which are engineered in such a way that it can propagate and it can segregate in two different host species let's say a bacteria and a eukaryotic species yeast but you would be surprised to hear that not only in bacteria or yeast these shuttle vectors shuttle vectors can be used to segregate plasmid from two different strains of bacteria let's say one gram positive and one gram negative bacteria or even there are some adenovector adenovirus based shuttle vectors which are used to propagate a uh, plasmid between e coli and mammalian cells so shuttle vectors are used to generally segregate your plasmid in two different species so now we'll look at some features of the shuttle, shuttle vectors and how they are different from other vectors so first feature is not unique which we talk about first is the multiple cloning site which should be a feature of every cloning vector so where you clone your gene of interest now since it would be expressed in both species like both the host species let's say for uh, bacteria or yeast so it should have host specific promoters otherwise the transcription and the translation of from this vector is not possible right so it should have host specific promoter other than that this plasmid should be replicated into the both the hosts so it should have let's say if it is uh, between bacteria and yeast it should have bacterial origin of replication a selectable marker in bacteria for example an antibiotic resistance gene similarly let's say if it's, if it is a bacteria and yeast shuttle vector it should have yeast oria as well it should have yeast selectable markers let's say some ura3 or something like that it should have also some sequences like ars and centromeric sequences which are essential for propagating it inside the yeast right in short these vectors has all the features to clone it inside a bacteria or grow it inside a yeast and that makes is makes these uh, uh, vectors so useful so in short we talk about that advantages so the main advantages is like it can be easily grown and manipulated inside a bacteria so it's easy to grow plasmids inside a bacteria right which is like comparatively uh, faster and easier to grow them in eukaryotic species like yeast but there are certain disadvantages of this system that is it has low carrying capacity and sometime it is not compatible in the host and so on so forth so there are also some disadvantages regarding these shuttle vectors but however most of the expression vectors these days which are used in mammalian expression vector are shuttle vectors which are pretty useful and they are used to propagate it inside the e coli and then the manipulation is done in the mammalian cell okay so here it was telling about this like uh, if you are looking one half is a bacterial second is used for the yeast cell and same concept is more used for the bacterial artificial chromosome so ori site is there from the plasmid you have taken so here you can say like a bacterial artificial chromosome here the uh, another party here you can insert your desired segment similar like that here you can insert the desired segment for the bacterial concept you are looking so one figure is telling about the bacterial artificial chromosome another is telling about the yeast artificial chromosome and when you club both the thing together so you can use the same thing at the various places so for the expression system uh, to be get developed and expression vector that means you are 
looking for the desired product to be get synthesized for this we are going to use certain subtle vectors only so with this it was my last slide in the presentations what is i'm looking for the next it is to certain questions i have kept uh, for you people as i have shown in the first also so let's uh, certain five to 10 questions are there if uh, rupesh sir permit me i can go for the five to 10 questions okay go ahead sir thank you sir thank you yeah as i have discussed in the first part also some of the questions are uh, there yes uh, first questions uh, first to three questions are somewhat uh, repetitions like a dna ligase both alkaline phosphate so let's move further directly for the fifth question yeah like uh, the origin of replication is found in many plasmid most important thing question is there because uh, as i have started from for that part only okay that is like a call 101 that is the first plasmid been synthesized and many of the modification is done with that only either it is the pbr322 or puc series same plasmid some part you may take from here some from here and there everywhere it is there the ori side that is called the call e1 note it down in your diary that is a call e1 is continuously every time people have used for their purposes second is like question lambda dna is obtained from where so it is Uh, already i have just totally discussed about the lambda phage uh, so lambda dna can be obtained from the phage itself next is related to some co uh, cosmid that is a contact tumors are formed by where that is in cosmid the cosmid concept already we have seen that is like a cos sites were there so cos site when it is the flanking region are available this cos sites are been called as what contact tumors that is they can bind with one to another it is not a, like a restriction enzyme site it is not a restrictive but they are flanking site and this are been called as a contactamers and these sites were been used into this experimentation that is like a cos sites are there this is the place are been called as a contactamers next is like a plasmid dna consisting of a dna of uh, desired segment in foreign dna so it is like, like uh, previous questions what i have done that is repetition uh, our expression vectors are uh, those which produce what plasmid antibiotic cdna or protein the answer is what i have already discussed like a cloning vectors and expression vector two different vectors i have explained the cloning vector is only doing for what just desired segment is copied a many a time just there is a dna sequence were given this a product is been copied a lot time it's like a xerox copy it's the cloning vector expression vector that is the within the dna segment what we desired was there you may introduce the some exonic region with full cassette like operator and promoter then it is been considered as expression vector uh, next is like a somewhat related to it only what just i have included in seventh question that is a uh, which side is responsible for high con uh, con condomerization cohesive end that is like a cos side cos site is only allowing this concontomerization that is the concoctomers is formed the cos sites are place where the concoctomers is there the next question is like a uh, regarding the plasmid a uh, what is the plasmid in a way that like a small circular dna molecule used as a vector to transmit the foreign dna is called what cosmid phasmid plasmid or osmid the answer will be plasmid uh one another important question all always been asked in the exam uh, i think uh, four question is there uh, okay not more than that up to 16 it will be i will take okay which are the antibiotic resistant genes being available in pbr322 so don't forget that is pbr322 possess ampicillin resistance and tetracycline resistance gene uh, like puc is there it is only ampicillin gene is there like cosmid is there only ampicillin resistance is only pbr322 is been observed that do possess the ampicillin and tetracycline resistance since and uh, don't forget about like a fourth option is given like a chloramphenicol chloramphenicol is been added into the uh, bacterial culture it's going to arrest the protein machinery if you arrest the protein machinery of a bacterial cell then the copy of the pbr322 dramatically increase so people are using the chloramphenicol to increase the copy number this also question is there but i think it's not listed but you can 
noted out in your diary. Next is like plasmid replication is depending upon the host cell. Is it true, false, cannot say, or none of the above? So plasmid replication, yeah, it is depend upon the host cell because if you are uh, repair the plasmid uh, is there and you may have inserted the in a host that is like a yeast is there and you have inserted into bacteria. The yeast based experimental part is like a plasmid one working another. So it is depend upon the host. Like a cos side of the cosmid consists of how many base pair? That what I was telling about the base pair. So it is 12. Next is like M13 is an example of filamentous fudge with uh, which kind of a stranded DNA vector is there. So keep in your mind already I have told that M13 is single stranded DNA. It is a, was a single stranded DNA in circularized form it is there. And phasmid vectors are combination of what? Plasmid, cosmid, plasmid, phage, cannot say or none of the above. So phasmid is a combination of plasmid plus phage and collaboratively we are calling as a plasmid plus phage as a phasmid. What is the co cosmid? It has the cos side plus a plasmid. So then we are going to call them as a cosmid. So don't get confused with the such terminology and I hope uh, you have learned a lot, uh, few minutes just I have left. So I'm ending uh, my presentation here. And uh, if you have any questions, you may ask uh, via Rupeshwar if anything is there. I over to Rupeshwar for the next session part to continue. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for such a great and detailed and in-depth presentation. I think uh, we, uh, like uh, we felt uh, we learned Hardcore biotechnology <laughs> regarding yeah, okay. restriction enzymes, post-meat, plasmid, vectors, and uh, like uh, RDNA technology, how it works, yeah. and all the things uh, that you explain in detail. They're very, very nice and in-depth. And even you uh, provide us practice of uh, some MCQs also, which would be definitely uh, be useful to all the students. We have also uh, some students online, Yas Patel and Sre Dubey. Uh, as our vice chancellor uh, told us to uh, give a platform to some of the students uh, who can provide uh, their uh, suggestions yeah. and feedback regarding the exam preparation and all other things. So yeah, I would like great. to uh, yeah. I would like to invite uh, Sri Dubey to uh, give the feedback that uh, how was uh, the lecture and uh, uh, whether they uh, like uh, they felt very good or they enjoyed or something like that. Sri Dubey is from Godra. He is the student of microbiology. Okay. So Sri, please can you provide your feedback? Yes, sir. Yeah. Very enjoyed. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Viral, sir, for being time for us. We are learn recombinant DNA technology, cloning, plasmid, plasmid, ETC, and important topics in detail. And they are very important too for NET and GSET exam preparation. And I, I also grateful to Sri Govind Guru University for giving us to platform for Craig Nate and G set and other entries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sri, for uh, nice words. Uh, yes, Patel, want to say something? Yes, in brief, please. Yes, I want to. I want to thank you, Peter and also I have learned about today. Uh, engineering vectors and other other topics. I think I have done late today, but uh, I ah. thank you. Thank you. I wish all the students who are listening through online mode on Facebook and uh, even on YouTube, they would be definitely enjoying your uh, in-depth lecture of biotechnology on recombinant DNA, how it works, what are the restriction enzyme and the other detail, even questionaries you gave us was, they were very, very impressive and they would definitely be important to all the students. And I would like to also uh, request Viral sir to share the PPT personally with me so I can share it later on in the group uh, which is prepared by us to motivate all the students and to work with them. Now uh, we have with yes, us a doctor. Definitely, I will share. Huh. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah, and, and thank uh, you for would... providing me also a platform so I can able to 
uh, connect with you and other all the students maybe uh, are there uh, th throughout the gujarat i able to share my the views on it thank you very much to you and the guru goind university for providing my platform to me thank you thank you sir thank you yeah. now i would like to uh, invite our uh, motivator and our great guru dr ajay soni sir uh, to say a few words uh, regarding uh, the two days lecture which was very fruitful and uh, then we would go for uh, the vote of thanks which would be given by my colleague uh, ms falguni parmar madam so i would go uh, i would like to invite uh, dr soni sir to uh, say a few words soni sir please डॉक्टर विजल भाई मांडलिया क्राइस्ट कॉलेज में खूब नामांकित कॉलेज ना एक्सपीरियंस प्रोफेसर तरीके हमने आर डी ए टेक्नोलॉजी बीजा कामों खूब एन्जॉय करउंटी प्रोफेसर होवा छता खातरी आप प्रोजेक्ट <laughs> अध्यापक आज न व्यूअर्स एक हजार अलग प्रकार की विशेषता है लाभ ले 
थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर नाइस स्पीच एंड ऑलवेज प्रोवाइडिंग अस फुल मोटिवेशन वेन एवर नीडेड सर थैंक यू अगेन for being such a great to us now we have with us uh, one eminent personality dr diren sutarya sir he is also uh, ec member respected ec member of sri goindpur university he is doctor also but still he is uh, having involved in all the activities of sri goindpur university so uh, i would like to hear some of motivating words from sutarya sir he is also... yes sir diren bhai sutarya eva ec member che स्वागत करूचार्थी प्रोत्साहन अपने मार्गदर्शन पूरु पा विनती करू चु डॉक्टर धीरेन भाई प्लीज प्लीज सर धीरेन सर अजय भाई साहेब द्वारा चिंतन चिंतन खरेखर नबड़ा के नबड़ाशक्तने गाइडन्स मलविए मगज विचार आना चिंतन करीतना आ परीक्षा उत्तरणी थवा सतत अजय भाई टीम नाकर साहेब ने अजय भाई खरेखर एक जो विस्तार मांग थी आ कोविड महामारी अंदर जय आप बदाज मानसिक रीतने भांगी पड़ा था तो आवा समय ने अवसर में बदली ना एमने जो विचार करो प्रताप सिंह जी चौहान साहेबे विचार ने जीवंत बना दीद अत्यारेमिनार अलग अलग विषय ने लाइने उपलब्धि प्राप्त करी से कारण के दरक खेवना दरक इच्छा हो अत्यारुभव आया 
અને એમને લેક્ચર્સ લીધા છે એ તમામે તમામ મહાભાવનો હું સમગ્ર યુનિવર્સિટીમાં હતી અને સમગ્ર એસી કાઉન્સિલ વતી હું ડોક્ટર ધીરેન્દ્ર સુતરિયા આપ સૌનો હું નતમસ્તક આભાર વ્યક્ત કરું છું અને યુનિવર્સિટીના કાર્યક્રમો આવી રીતના થાય અને આપ સૌ સતત મારા વિદ્યા એક નમ્ર માંગે છે કારણ કે આ વિસ્તારનો વિદ્યાર્થી નબળો નથી પરંતુ એને સાચી દિશાની જરૂર છે અને સાચી દિશાની જરૂર આપ સૌ ગુરુજનો દ્વારા જ અમારા વિદ્યાર્થીઓને સતત મળતી રહે અને અમારા વિદ્યાર્થી પણ અન્ય યુનિવર્સિટીની હરોળમાં એ પોતાનું નામ રોશન કરે સાથે સાથે અમારી યુનિવર્સિટીની પણ નામ ના થાય એવા તમામ તમામ પ્રયત્નો આપ સાહેબ શ્રીઓ એ કર્યા જ છે અને આગામી દિવસોમાં પણ આપ સૌ અમને આવી રીતના જ મદદરૂપ થતા રહેશો એવી આપ સૌને મારી પ્રાર્થના છે અને આ વેબિનાર જ્યારથી શરૂ થયો છે ત્યારથી સતત અમે લોકો પણ આ વેબિનાર ની અંદર હાજરી આપીએ છીએ અને અમારી યુનિવર્સિટીના જે પ્રોફેસર મિત્રો આ વેબિનારના સેવા યજ્ઞની અંદર જોડાયેલા છે એમને પણ સતત મોટિવેટ કરી રહ્યા છે આપ સૌ આ વેબિનાર ને સફળ બનાવો અને અમારા વિદ્યાર્થીઓ જે વિસ્તારના જે વિદ્યાર્થીઓને જે વસ્તુ વિષય વસ્તુનું જ્ઞાન નથી એમાં તમે પ્રકાશ પાડો એવી આપ સૌને મારી પ્રાર્થના છે જય જય ગરવી ગુજરાત વંદે માતરમ ભારત માતા કી જય આવતીકાલે આવતીકાલે કેમેસ્ટ્રી નો ઓપનિંગ છે અને પરમ દિવસે ફિઝિક્સ નું ઓપનિંગ છે કેમેસ્ટ્રી ના કાર્યક્રમમાં આપણા શિક્ષણ મંત્રી વિભાવરીબેન દવે આપણા વાઇસ ચાન્સલર વિદ્યાપીઠ ના વાઇસ ચાન્સલર પ્રોફેસર અનામિકભાઈ શાહ અને અજુરિયા સાહેબ સૌરાષ્ટ્ર યુનિવર્સિટી થી આપણી વચ્ચે આવતીકાલે પણ હાજર થવાના છે ત્રણ થી પાંચ અને પરમ દિવસે ત્રણ થી પાંચ છે ફિઝિક્સ નું આપણે ઓપનિંગ કરવા જઈ રહ્યા છે ધીરેનભાઈ ત્રણેય ની ક્વીઝ અમે મૂકી દીધી છે વિદ્યાર્થીઓ હવે તમે કીધેલા રસ્તા ઉપર ચાલવા માટે કટિબદ્ધ થઈ ગયા છે સખત મહેનત કરતા થઈ ગયા છે તમારા આશીર્વાદ વડીલો ના ઈસીએસી ના આશીર્વાદ ને કારણે વિદ્યાર્થીઓ ને કામ કરવાનો ઉત્સાહ વધ્યો છે અમારી ટીમ સાથી નાગર સાહેબ ફાલ્ગુની બેન નો ઉત્સાહ વધ્યો છે તમારું સ્વતંત્ર માર્ગદર્શન અમને મળતું રહેશે અને યુનિવર્સિટી ના સાથ સહકાર થી અમારી નવી પેઢી તેજસ્વી પેઢી મહેનત કરનારી પેઢી પુરુષાર્થ અને પશ્ચિમ પાડનારી પેઢી બની રહેશે એ જ અભ્યાસ સાથે to provide uh, our mot- uh, us motivation and appreciate our work then uh, uh, after that uh, rupesh nakar sir uh, he gave introduction of viral mandalya sir and then viral mandalya sir which was our uh, guest uh, lecturer of today's session who is assistant professor at christ college rajkot and uh, uh, he gave a lecture on our dna technology thank you so much sir for giving us a, your precious time and providing an in detail and in depth lecture on our dna technology uh, i would like to depict some uh, important topics of viral sir's lecture which was the introduction of our dna technology definition of recombinant dna technology uh, he tot- uh, he he presented total three presentations and two different questionnaires uh, in first presentation he, uh, he described rdna technology with all steps which was isolation cutting ligation and insertion transformation and expression uh, then after he provides the some of the how steps and application of rdna technology the application are like humulin production golden rice 
gene therapy, diagnostic test, vaccines, and weed killer resistant crops. Then after he uh, he uh, presented an anima uh, animated movie of RDNA technology in th in treating of uh, hemophilia. Uh, in second in his second presentation, he provide a lecture on uh, manipulation of purified DNA, in which he uh, gave a lecture in detail of uh, various enzymes used in RDNA technology. The first enzyme was nuclease. There are uh, two types of nuclease, endonuclease and exonuclease. Then, uh, in poly uh, then polymerase. Polymerases are of four types. DNA polymerase, bone, linofragment, tag pol uh, tag DNA polymerase and reverse transcriptase. Then uh, some important enzymes for cutting DNA which are known as restriction endonuclease. Three types of restriction yeah. endonuclease. Type 1, type 2 and type 3. Yeah. Of which type 2 enzyme is mostly used Restriction endonuclease uh, provides two types of and uh, either it is blunt end or sticky end. Then uh, in his in his third oh, sorry uh, then after E. coli uh, DNA ligase he provided a lecture on DNA ligase enzyme uh, two type of DNA ligase E. coli DNA ligase and T4 DNA ligase. Then in his third presentation he gave a detailed information on cloning uh, on vectors. Uh, there are two types of vector, cloning vector and expression vector. Cloning vectors are generally used for uh, getting more copies of gene uh, of interest. And expression vector are used to obtain protein production. Then used as vectors. There are four types of vectors, plasmid vectors, bacteriophages, hybrid and uh, artificial. Plasmid vectors again are of uh, three types. Fertility plasmid, resistant plasmid, and cold plasmids, of which uh, normally resistant plasmids are used in RDNA technology. Uh, then second vector are phage. There are two types of phage vectors. First is lambda phage, and second is M13 phage. Uh, lambda phage is double stranded DNA phage, and M13 phage is single stranded DNA phage, then hybrid vectors. There are also two types of hybrid vectors, cosmid and phagemid, which are generally used in uh, DNA, recombinant DNA technology. Artificial chromosomes uh, from various arti artificial chromosomes, uh, mainly two types of artificial chromosomes are used, that, they are, that are bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosome. And after that, uh, he, uh, he gave information on shuttle vector using an animation uh, thank you so much sir uh, for pro for giving a lecture which was informative and uh, which is full of which was full of diagrams and animation so that our students can take interest and uh, they can study with interest in this topic and can understand easily uh, after that uh, sir also solved certain questions on vectors and uh, various enzymes. Uh, then after, uh, Shrey uh, Dubey and uh, Yash Patel from PT Arts and Science College students of microbiology uh, provides their feedback. Uh, thank you, Yash and Shrey, for providing your feedback. They, they mean they are very important for us. And uh, then after Dr. Ajay Soni, sir, and Dr. Diren Sutarya, sir, uh, who is EC member of Shri Govind Guru University, he appreciated our work and thank you, sir, Ajay Soni, sir, and Dhiran Sutarya, sir, for always appreciating our work and for always motivating us to give our best uh, along with that all, uh, all the lecture professors, all the students, all the principals, and our, uh, our VC sir, registrar sir, all the EC members, uh, I would like to thank you all for providing us this platform and for uh, giving us chance to help you and VC sir, registrar sir, EC members and uh, Ajay Soni sir, special thank to you to motivate us and uh, I would like to end my speech here. Uh, thank you so much everyone. Very good. Uh, thank you. Now I would like to uh, provide uh, one more little information that uh, the day after tomorrow, on Thursday, we have one uh, another lecture of lecture number six of 
डॉक्टर प्रसन्ना धाराणी मैडम शी इज असोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन मैक्रोबायोलॉजी एंड शी इज गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन बेजिक इम्युनोलॉजी सो इट विल बी ऑल्सो यूजफुल टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट प्रिपेरिंग फॉर नेट जी सेट एक्सामिनेशन सो स्टेट यून Thank you, Viral sir, uh, Sony sir, Falguni madam for such a nice presentation. Even the students, Shrey and yes, who have joined, even Diren Sutaria and uh, all of you, I am heartily thankful to all of you on behalf of uh, our bioscience uh, net GZ preparation team and Goindpur University. So I end up the meeting here. Uh, Jai Hind. Thank you. Vande Mataram. Aujo bata. Thank you. Kale bolu apnu. Tranji paat.